Hi, beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on another episode here on Creative Street. Today's episode is about creativity and death. Um, so before we get into the episode, I want to give a few birthday shout outs. One is myself. I'm turning 30 this year. Woohoo! Um also uh a colleague of mine, um, Dr. Sullivan. Uh, she's also, you know, um, his birthday is coming up as well. And I just want to take a moment to give her a shout out. Happy birthday, Aquarius buddy. Um, there is also a few birthdays um, that are, that, that have passed. Uh, my cousin, um, Patrick, is one of them. And uh, an old friend of mine, Rob, also was his birthday. Um, and then I have another friend uh, who's coming up as well. So just want to say, like, shout out to all the Capricorns and the Aquariuses. Um, <clears throat> all right. So moving forward, as you can tell, I'm um, I have now included me working on an uh, an art piece. Um, for this episode and probably for the episodes where I do solo topics uh, moving forward. Um, this painting is inspired by one of my favorite concepts, which is uh, yin and yang. And I think it's befitting of the episode for today because I am talking about one of the um, concepts of yin and yang, which is life and death. It's this uh, dichotomy that exists with creating which is like breathing life into something and death which is like this decay or this transformation of something and death for me in this episode is literally talking about um this relationship of creation and um our need to immortalize <clears throat> It's one of my favorite subjects on a spiritual level and then on a psychology, uh, psychological level. I believe that um, our root for creativity stems from our relationship between death and acknowledging that our time on this earth in this realm is limited. Um, our relationship to death, it can't like our relationship to death is. Um, It's cre like it it created religions. And I know that that's gonna sound a little controversial, but it it created religions. It um it's created a lot of these things. And uh, aside from the emotional, psychological um anguish that we feel from this acknowledgement of limited time, um, I think it also it's also helped us create these amazing masterpieces that live on after our passing. Um, like I mentioned, it created a thousand and one religions that exist today and have ever existed. Um, however, to focus on the creative aspect of death, this episode is about the relationship to death and our need for remembrance. Um, this want to be remembered. Uh, we want to think that our lives are not meaningless or are not pointless, that our existence is not pointless. Throughout centuries, we have created many works of art um, that some end up transcending time and to the point where it, it causes us to even romanticize the past. Um, from cave paintings to architecture to intricate jewelry and elaborate barriers, burials, <laughs> sorry I'm a little tongue twisted um there's something innate in our want to be remembered um don't get me wrong I don't think um every creative act uh was done with the intention with that intention in mind and I don't think some artists really created works thinking that they would forever be around. Like, I don't think Da Vinci believed that hundreds of years later, we would still be discussing like the brilliant artworks because he only made very few artworks. 
I don't think that he thought that these um, pieces would be around for as long as they have. Um, but I do believe that he knew it would cause a movement. And that's one thing that art and creativity and like our creative acts can do. It's um, it, it causes a movement within people and with culture, within culture and, and technology. Um, sorry. And that's really what an artist can do with their craft. Like there's a song, um, there's a song called Carillus uh, by Flughand. And I don't know where he took this quote from. It's one of those typical lo-fi songs where they take like a, a snippet of a movie or like of something and they put like lo-fi music to it. Um, but I really, I really liked this quote um, where this guy says like, you have to essentially choose a field um, that you operate at your best capacity which then serves as an influence to deter all these other things that you're worrying about. Um, in this case, this, this man, uh, he, he chose music. Um, and he, he says that I, I take care of music as best that I can with the truest beliefs than all, all the other things that I want to be affected will be affected as I desire to as I desire them to be affected as much as I can affect them. And I think that's what we can do as creatives. Um, we can influence the future, we can influence other lives, we can influence culture, we can influence technology. And there is in this need to be remembered, in this need to like to continue past our time, I think that comes from this acknowledgement of mortality. Um, just to get a little personal, like I don't. I've had a lot of uh, things go on with me in my life, and from a very young age, um. I was, I was tired of existing. Like I was, uh, talking in another episode, um, with one of my, with my other co-hosts, um, for sugar and spice and a little advice. And I was, I was telling her, like, I didn't expect to live to 30. Um, I, I didn't expect when I was a kid, I, I couldn't even fathom living this long. And sometimes I still, I sometimes still feel, feel that not to say that, you know, like I'm depressed or anything though. No. Like I'm good. I, I'm comfortable and I'm happy with the life that I have, but that's not to say that wasn't, that wasn't my mentality forever. Um, when I was a kid, I, I actually, I, I was so, I was so tired and I mind you, and I had only lived 14 years at that point. And I was just, I was so tired of everything. And I remember when I was growing up, um, I was taught about like the concept of heaven. And also in my religion, like we, we believe like in spirits. So like when you pass away, you not necessarily go to heaven, but you can also stay in this like limbo world and you become one of the spirits. Um, and and you can get reincarnated and everything. And I was like, that sounds terrible. <laughs> like, it's so much work to live. It's so much work to give 100% of yourself on a daily um, and to show up for people. It, and not to say it's not rewarding, it's just a lot of work and it's a lot of consciousness. It's a lot of conscious effort um, that you have to put into to just existing. And that's not even bringing into all the social constructs we've created for ourselves of work and having to live in a box and pay for your box and pay for food and pay so that you're just not in the rain and you can eat and you have a place to sleep. 
Like that's so much. So I thought to myself, like, what if, what if that really is death? Like, oh Lord, I don't, I don't know if I want to go continue going through the cycle. Um, obviously there's no way of escaping either one. <laughs> like you either live or you die. <laughs> there's, I don't think there's like that in between, but, um, <clears throat> I thought to myself, well, since we technically don't really know what death is, right? Why can't death just be this calming, relaxing space where you can just forever float in this abyss of darkness? And and I'm I I'm a very um I'm very what's that called? Um uh, I'm an extrovert um, when I'm comfortable and when I'm around people and I feel like it's the right environment. But I'd say that I'm I'm a I'm a big introvert. Like I love overthinking and not overthinking on like minor things, but like overthinking on like the abstracts, the things that it's like you can have as many theories as you want. You're never gonna solve them. I love those questions. I love thinking of the abstract and so to me death was floating in this black dark abyss where all I get to do is explore those abstract concepts like abstract concepts and and just have all the time in the world of peace and solitude and and time and so to get a little bit more personal there did come a point where I was I was so over everything that I did want to take my life I was I was like this close <laughs> this close and something in me said that's too easy that's too easy it's it's easy on your family and i i know that this is uh this isn't the great greatest mindset because i do recognize that sometimes when someone passes it's harder on the people that that continue living and and no longer have access to someone they dearly cared about and it's kind of selfish because that person that passed away doesn't have to deal with the remnants of whatever they left behind. And I acknowledge that. But mind you, this is my 14-year-old brain. It was too easy to go. And part of me was like, that's what they want. Like, that's what everybody wants to just, like, be like, oh, finally. Like, one last person you got to worry about. Um, not to say that my parents are like that or my family members really would have thought that but at that time I did I did think that that that's what they would think and and I also called myself a coward I I recognized that like Emile Sharon says Death is, it's your, it's an easy escape. It's an easy out. It takes more courage. It takes more willpower to live than it does to die. Maybe the act of taking your life takes some courage. Not to say, guys, don't go out and do that. Please, if you're having suicidal thoughts, you know, call 911 call a suicide hotline, speak to somebody, um, seek help, because I don't think that that is the way to go as someone who has tried and has felt that way. And like I mentioned, death isn't, isn't something I'm afraid of. If anything, death is a relief. It's, it's a, it's a way of 
looking at the world. Why do I say that? So die, dying is like a reset button. Whatever whatever your thoughts on the afterlife is, it's it's a reset button. You're experiencing something new. You're not experiencing this realm anymore. And I think we owe it to ourselves. I think we owe it to those around us that live within our lives, right? Because we're all the main characters of our own lives. We owe it to yourself, to, to ourselves, to live out as best as we can the time that we're allotted because our time is an infinite and I think there is a, a sweet relief in knowing that time isn't unlimited you're not immortal like it blows my mind when someone when I I read more and more and I watch these shows about wanting to be immortal like I'm just like why why do you want to be immortal? I wouldn't mind being immortal in the sense that having enough time to read, to learn what I need to learn about this life, to see the sights I want to see, and to experience the time I want to experience. But after that, I don't want to continue. It's, <laughs> there's no need. There is such a, a relief when it comes to knowing that there's an end um again please that doesn't mean to that you listen to this and then say oh yeah stephanie's right it is a relief me saying this doesn't doesn't mean that you go out and you kill yourself because it like it's something that you know, will bring you immediate bliss. Um, I think on the contrary, we, we need to find the courage. We need to find the strength, the willpower to continue because all of us are here with a purpose. I do genuinely believe that. And I think that finding solace, finding peace, because I do think that there's, this sense of anxiety, this sense of impending doom um, that comes with your relationship with death. And if you don't know how to resolve that within yourself, life is going to be 20 times harder than it really needs to be. And I, I do genuinely believe that. Uh, so that's why I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm providing perspective on my relationship with death so that you can find solace and peace with that limited time. And so because you know that time is limited, right? The psychology of death is very, is very intricate and it's, it's fascinating because once you've resolved that inner, inner feeling, that inner doom, that anxiety that any moment this reality can end you start to value your time more you start to value the time that you have with your loved ones you start to value the the time that you give yourself for your own inner reflections for your own tutelage for your creative acts though those are the biggest ones like i we all innately want to create things whether it's a family whether it's an amazing career knowledge discoveries arts music etc 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 we all have a desire to create and when you acknowledge that your time is limited that the time that you have to show, to create something that's going to cause 
change that's going to influence those around you, that's going to influence that one person that you create inspiration for, that you can cause motivation for, that you can you can impact people. We impact people all the time, whether it's positive or negative. We impact people at all times. You impact your loved ones. You impact yourself. You impact the world around you. And so, like I mentioned, when you when you find that solace, when you find the appreciation for what death really means, I think that it frees you. It frees you and it allows you to feel deeper. It allows you to connect with things at a deeper level because you know that these moments are ever fleeting, that this time is forever limited. And that's very powerful. That's, that's a very powerful feeling. And when you know that you're influencing at all moments, you will want to create a positive you, you you won't care about the little things. You won't care that somebody honked the horn behind you because you didn't move fast enough. If anything, like in those moments, how sad, how sad that this person doesn't realize that this is a wasted moment. This is a moment that doesn't impact, it doesn't create value create value for ourselves it doesn't create value for others and that's what creating can do creating creates value within the culture creates transformations technology social cultural linguistic and just imagination the more you influence people the more you'll see this world become meaningful to you. It will give you a purpose in life. And I think that's the main point that I wanted to get here. Understanding that death and life are one and the same. They are two sides of the same coin. You'll find that the rim is purpose that the outer edge of a coin is your purpose. It's creating that connection between what makes life meaningful and your death meaningful. So to kind of give some, uh, I, I do a lot of research when I, when I talk about these things and I give you some of my vulnerable um, thoughts because I can tell you for sure nobody really knows that um, that story I just shared and uh, I'm the type of person that when I I'm speaking from my authentic genuine inner thoughts like everything I just said is what I just thought and then out um, I'm shaking like because it's it's so it's so true to me um and so with that uh i did want to mention that to kind of there are some things that did inspire um this conversation and one of those was um uh, the philosophize this episode 112 where um he's not really talking about this concept per se but he does bring up a section where um he brings up freud's one of freud's uh theories and you know freud is very famous where he likes to sexualize everything um but there is a specific theory that he has i forgot the name of it i didn't write it down i'm sorry um but definitely go check it out um he talks about this relationship of creativity and death and he's he broke it down into two so eros is 
um, what he does, that sexual drive, right? Which is at, at the same time, you can call it a creative drive because the sexual urge causes you to want to reproduce and reproduction is a, one of the main act of creativity that we do. There is an innate need to reproduce. Um, and Thanos, which I forgot what he what that one was <laughs> sorry guys I guess um my research wasn't so so great in the sense that I can't remember <laughs> um but when he's talking in that section about Eros and Thanos he describes that Freud believed that creativity comes from that same drive that Eros does um that you know that you want to reproduce and that that association of reproduction stems from death wanting to create something that will continue existing after your death and that's really the main point of this create something that you'll be remembered for and believe me you will see that life is worth living you will see that there is a purpose to everything um uh, Brian Murarescu, um, on Joe Rogan's podcast, uh, episode 2047, they have a whole conversation on like archaeology and creativity and all of this. And when I was listening to it, I, I was thinking about it and he, he said something and Joe said something that I that really stuck out to me, which is creativity is influenced by our present predecessors. So um, in a way, those things that people create, those things that that we leave behind, they influence future generation. Like I mentioned, creativity influences culture. It can cause transformation. It can cause um, new ideas, new shifts. And it's influenced by the people that come before us. No matter how much in a vacuum you like to believe as an artist, as a creative, that you create, like that your things come out of, there is a, the realm, and that's a whole other conversation. There's this realm that I do believe some ideas come from the ether, that, that it's a it's, uh, it's, spontaneous idea but that's like a drop in the bucket in how much influence our current culture that was created by these people by individuals from the past um really come into effect like a lot of the things that we create are based on different ideas that's why every now and then like you'll well, not every now and then, <laughs> I think like in every episode of my solo ones, I always bring out different research and different um, philosophers and artists and, sorry, and uh, podcasters that say the same thing because I want to show you that there is, that it's not just me thinking this and that my ideas although they're not like groundbreaking, at least not all um, that I've shared, they're not groundbreaking. They're, but they're based on others. And it's, it's this common story. It's, it's this, this long, long um, story that we've been saying over generations and generations. It's, it's the same concepts just different words are being used to describe it, different scenarios, different examples. But we're all talking about the same thing. Um, that's why I mentioned religion really quick, because to me, religion has always been different ways of saying the same thing. Don't be mean to each other. There's no need to hate. And when you find purpose in life, when you find a way to create something not just for yourself but for everybody else and for the future to come your life is more meaningful that I genuinely believe um 
So that's really what I wanted to say today. That was the episode I wanted to give. And I hope that this conversation, although it's it can be triggering for many and it can be triggering um, in different levels, psychological um, and emotional, um, please, if you need to talk to someone, um, I'm not a therapist, but you can always reach out to me and I can help find resources for you. Um, if you need to talk to someone, if you need to vent, if you find your creative outlet and obviously speak to someone, to a loved one, to a therapist, to a psychologist, a psychiatrist, to just to anybody that's willing to listen and show you acceptance and help you see the world in a different perspective because that's really the point of this conversation death is very triggering because we've all experienced death and will experience death but it doesn't have to be a bad thing death can be a strong tool for creative acts for finding purpose in life and for becoming a different you a better you not one that wallows but a better you i hope you like the show today leave your questions comments feedback um in the show notes you can also send me a voice memo i also hope you liked um, my art piece um i don't have a name for it yet but I know that I want out. You'll see the finished artwork <laughs> at some point. Um, and I guess we can pick a name together if you're interested in, in doing something like that. Um, but yeah, thank you again for tuning in. Um, I hope you catch me again next week. Uh, next week, I believe I have um, Shuby um, coming up. And Shuby is a life coach. Um, we had a really fun conversation. So stu- uh, like, stay tuned to next week. Um, and yeah, thank you guys. I hope you have an amazing Wednesday. Mm-hmm.